excited about our Thanksgiving dinner today. So if y'all have any neighbors or friends that you know aren't going to have anybody to help feed them, bring them on down to church today. Four o'clock we're going to start. A three, and three. At three o'clock for the jump house is out front again. Yeah, so. And the hayride. And the hayride, that's right, yeah. Let's open it in a word for it. Dear Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. And Lord, we don't stop often enough to give you thanks for everything you've done for each one of us. Father, I think about Veterans Day that will just pass, and we thank you, dear Lord, for all of our veterans. Lord, I, we can't imagine what they go through when they're in war. But Lord, we know that they need to cling to you just like we all do. And Father, we just thank you for this wonderful Thanksgiving season. Help us to remember you, to exalt and glorify your name. We know your word says that every good thing in our life comes from you. Father, we want to thank you. We pray that you will inhabit the praises of your people and that you will move amongst us today, setting captives free, transforming our lives, helping us to be everything you've called us to be. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. I received this from uh, Pastor Greg Laurie. This morning, Greg Laurie is the pastor of Harvest Fellowship in California. Change is inevitable in our jobs, families, relationships, church, and country. Change, change swirls all around us. It is our duty to be ready for the changes that God throws at us because we know it will be an incredible blessing. No one is beyond the reach of God. God changed Saul's heart in a moment. So it can happen. Let's take our hymns and stand and turn to page 29. Trying time for them, Lord. And Lord, we just pray for comfort that they have to yes. deal with 
not having a loved one with them yeah. is just thank you and save me, Lord. Just, just help them through this most difficult time. Lord. Yes. And Lord, as we're going to worship this morning, we just, as always, pray that you'll be with Paul and Betty, just bless yes. them in a mighty way as yes. they lead us in song and music. This brother, brother Sonny, as you bring some message you laid on his heart, just speak to him. And, and Lord, just open our hearts when we, we, when we all can receive that message this morning. And Lord, we continue to pray for those in our church family and friends and neighbors that are sick, going through some yes. difficult times. We just pray for healing or comfort, or whatever thy will is for each one of us need, dear Lord. We just trust in you. And Lord, for this offering, as always, Lord, our church has obligations. And we're just thankful for, for this offering this morning. Just yes. use it according to your will. Yes. Through your church here at Balzor and on the mission field, however, however you see fit, Lord, yes. we're just thankful you blessed us enough we can give back to you. Yes. And Lord, again, we're just so thankful that you loved us enough to send us a Savior, Jesus yes. Christ, Lord. Thank you. And he went to the cross and shed his blood for our sins when we yes. have that forgiveness and that eternal life, Lord. Yes. So we just thank you so much and we just give all the praise and all the glory to you. Yes. Just pray these things in Jesus' precious holy name. Sunday, and it just struck my heart. 
it just struck my heart <laughs> uh, which one to read. And uh, this is uh, Reach Texas. And, you know, we have overseas and we have uh, different ones, but this is right here in the state of Texas. And it's so important because um, sometimes we overlook the state of Texas. You know, when in missions and everything, it's so important to reach out to the ones overseas and everything, but we have a uh, duty here, right here, in our state to reach people. And this is, uh, this one I read, I'm gonna read this morning is about young people need adults. I don't cry. Young people, teenagers, are close to my heart. Uh, we need to turn that down somewhere. Right, anyway, um, Kelsey was a Bar City cheerleader, active in and cherished by her community, a straight A student and, a, and occasional church attender. No one knew how little purpose she found in life until she participated in her first mission trip and became a born-again born follower of Christ. Now, as an adult, she serves in student ministry as a girls' ministry director, pointing other young ladies to their own purpose in Christ. If you were to ask Kelsey what had the biggest impact in finding her purpose in Christ, she wouldn't say the sermons preached by her student pastor, the events offered, or even the companionship of her peers. What she would say is, can you guess? Adults. Hmm. Not an, an adult, rather adults. I know this because Kelsey was once my student, and we have remained in contact. Now, her ministry repeats the same strategy that impacted her as a teenager, the influence of adults. Why does Kelsey say adults were, were the key? Re recall your teenagers, your teenage years. How many lessons, sermons, or peers come to mind? Likely very few, if any. But how many adults do you recall impacting your life? Personally, I can immediately name five. I have three that I know in my life. Second, consider data. A recent Springtide Research Institute survey conducted with over 10,000 students concluded that adults were the largest contributor to a young person finding purpose in life. Mm. The study found that only 50% of young people who did not have mentors in their life found purpose. Of course, those who had five or more mentors, 91% found meaning and purpose in their own lives. Undeniably, adults are vital for a young person to find purpose. As Christ followers who know the source of our purpose, how much more vital is it for adults to, to invest in teenagers so that they might come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Savior? I'm going to share with you just a minute, Brother Sonny, I don't mean to take all your time, but um, I was at a church for four years with my children and, and their daddy, but I had the wonderful privilege of working with a man and his wife, uh, the youth minister and his wife, and um, they planned all the activities, they planned what we were going to do, but I had the privilege when we played games, I would play those games with them. You know how you fall back and somebody catches you? We did that. All kinds of things, fun things. And then we went to church camp. If you've never been to church camp with your teens, some of you people think about it. It's the most wonderful thing that you could ever do. We had more fun, and I didn't do anything. I was just there. I could love them, and if they needed anything, they knew they could come to me, and because they knew that I, I did teach seventh grade girls. But uh, mostly, I just 
was there with them and, and they knew I loved them and they needed that. But there's another thing I want to say. When the youth go to church camp, they get so excited. It's so wonderful because they experience the Lord in such a mighty way. And then they come back to church and they come up here and sit on the front and they just raise their hands and they're so excited and they praise the Lord. And what do we adults do? Do we encourage them? Do we say, oh, we're so glad you're so excited and we want to praise the Lord like you do and we want you. Adult, teenagers, youth are so important to our church. Amen. We need these youth yes. as well as children, but we need to encourage these youth. Yes. We need to show them how much we love them and just worship with them. You don't have to raise your hand, but I mean to help them, encourage them to stay excited about the Lord and keep them coming to church and, and wanting to, to, to serve the Lord. So this was really special to my heart, and I thank you that I had the privilege to come up here and, and, and speak about this. Mm -hmm. So let's just love these, these teenagers. We have two right now. Simron's been coming for a long time, and she just went to the youth group. And then we have Lily, and it looks like we have some, little, some visitors this morning with us, and uh, that's wonderful. So... Uh, this is one of the ministries down of Texas, and I wanted to bring that out, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. Here's the offering envelopes are out on the table out there. If you haven't given or you feel in your heart you want to give, give. And then we have 1125 and our goal is 2900 So let's fill up that. Fill it up. <laughs> We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the beautiful weather, Lord, that you've given us, Lord. And as we celebrate Thanksgiving, we give thanks for all that you've done for us, Lord, throughout this year. Lord, you've blessed us, you've blessed our church, you've blessed each individual here, Father. We don't always count our blessings, Lord, but we know that you've been blessing us all along. Lord, and I lift up Linda Lee as she had this procedure done. Lord, you know we, we've we prayed a lot for Linda Lee. Lord, we just pray that she will be well, Lord. Yes. That you'll give her strength yes. and give her guidance each day, Lord. We thank you for all you've already done for her, Lord. Yes. We can praise you for that, Lord. And we'll give you more praise, Father. Yes. Lord, I lift up Caitlin as she has a broken rib, Lord. We pray for speedy recovery and healing, Lord. Give her strength and ease the pain she has. Watch over and take care of her each day, Lord. Lord, I lift up Cindy Sampler. Lord, you know the situation, Lord, that caused all this pancreas business, Lord. And Father, I just lift it up, Lord. You'll take this away from her. Lord, you'll heal her body and give her strength. And give her guidance each day, Lord. We miss her when she's gone, Father. Lord, and watch over and take care of her, Father. Lord, I lift up Jack Wheeling. Lord, he's in the hospital. We just pray, Lord, for healing upon his body. Yes. Lord, we know he's suffering a lot. Lord, give him strength. Yes. And be with his family, Lord. Watch over and take care of each one of them, Father. Give them all strength and guidance each day, Lord. The Lord, I lift up Wayne Bradley as he's in rehab, Lord. I pray for healing upon his body. Give him strength and guidance also, Lord. And Father, I, above all, I pray that each one, I, one we pray for, Lord, will recognize that you're the healer. Yes. And you're the one that they gain strength from. Lord, I lift up Nita Needham. Lord, we know that Things don't look good, Lord, but Father, you can change that. Yes. And we know that, Lord, but we lift her up and give her strength she needs yes. each day, Lord, and be with yes. Tina and Dale and the boys. Yes. Lord, if they tend to her, Lord, give them strength and guidance each yes. day, Father. 
Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for our church. Yes. Lord, as we celebrate Thanksgiving this evening, Lord, let us give you the praise for everything you yes. do. Lord, we give you the thanks, Lord. Yes. Father, we just thank you for all you do. And Lord, if there be a lost soul here, I pray they come to know you in a really yes. mighty way today, yes. Father. Lord, the, the Lord, you know, as I always ask, Lord, that you buy and take from our church. Yes. Put a hedge and a wall of protection around the church as well as each individual in the church, Father. Lord, we thank you for everything you do. I lift up Brother Sonny as he brings the message today. Lord, I pray, Lord, that as he gives us a message, if there's the lost soul here, they come to know you. Lord, for it's in Jesus' name I ask you all. Amen. 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 Our next song will be 193. It's all stand. One day. Oh, 